If it's good enough for the King of Sweden, it's good enough for us. We have been invited on an exclusive moose hunt in northern Sweden. Last week, His Majesty was in residence. This week, we've flown in. There's a helicopter. And there's hunting. Extraordinary hunting. This is my music. <laughs> I started hunting with my father when I was seven years old. I shot my first deer when I was 11, I think. And uh, my father always taught me, the moose is the king of the forest. The moose hunting season starts earlier in northern Sweden than in the south and we're already a few weeks in. But the window of opportunity is small before winter takes a grip. Where guests of world-leading red dot site manufacturer Aimpoint and most famous name in hearing protection 3M Peltor. Both brands are just as at home in this environment as the moose and ptarmigan in the hills. The men hoping to pull the trigger are Danish professional hunter, journalist and star of the wild boar fevers before double digits, Jens Kier Knudsen, plus our own Tim Pilbeam. You all kind of work your way up in the burn. One is a moose whisperer, the other isn't. And he needs educating in the way of the aim point. Contact, focus, kill it. Contact, focus, kill it. I was, I was, the I was, just, I was just bringing the, the barrel up too yep. fast. Now we have learned that you can actually raise the barrel up with the breathing. That means that we can adjust the height. Yeah. With the breathing also. Method in your madness, Eric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he used it. And that's incredible. That, uh, the guy from the island actually used the technique from a Swedish guy. Hmm. Use technique from loads of Swedish films I've seen. <laughs> Fantastic. The range day puts theory into practice. Static and driven targets test Tim and Jason. They both get a Helix, as these are the preferred rifle of our outfitter Johan Pearson from Fjelljakt. It's claimed to be the fastest straight pull in the market. But for the moment, consistent shot placement is all Eric wants. I'm happy with that. As you see, on this distance, with this big kill zoom, you will have your hits where you have the focus point. Yes. Very good. I think my biggest problem was actually, is you, is that contact, I'm looking at the, at the target, and then I focus, so I, I'm focusing on a specific part of that animal, and then the red dot comes along, and as soon as that red dot's in the right place, kill. And what, what I was doing, in fact, is my I was focusing, then my eye was going back to the red dot and following the red dot. And that's what the problems were. The final lesson has Eric simulating an approach on a moose. It is likely that during our hunt, the moose hound will hold the moose at bay. We have a moose in front of them, and of course we have a dog that work around the moose. So what I want to see here is that the moose and the dog is separated. Maybe they will hear the dog, they may will hear it bark, but they don't see the dog, then I don't want them to take the shot. I want them to take the shot when the dog and the moose is totally separated. Because that dog could have quite easily... Yeah, we, we don't know if it's slightly behind the moose that way also, or if it's in front of the moose. Yeah. A clear sight of both moose and dog is vital, which is another huge advantage of the aim point, your peripheral vision. Are you happy? Very happy, yeah, very happy. Are sure. you happy? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the hunting and the first morning is a washout. 
the helicopter won't fly today, as even if the pilot gets us out onto the hills, he might not be able to come and get us. Instead, it will be on foot. We have three days hunting ahead of us. Hey, Curly Pilgrim. I'm actually um, quite anxious and quite nervous. I didn't actually sleep much last night. Um, we got here, beautiful place in the dark, and then suddenly the reality kicks in. So all those things um, Eric was teaching us, I'm just thinking, you know, contact, focus, shoot. Oh my goodness, so the pressure's on, but yes, I'm so, so excited, basically. So let's get on and do some hunting. Yes. Tim will be with our host, Johan Pearson, and his dog, Stay. We can see this might cause some confusion with the UK contingent. Jason will be following Jens, and Frederick Johansson from Peltor and Sabine Eriksson from Mainpoint will hunt with a third dog handler. It is always interesting to find out what ammo the guys choose in these new hunting situations. So I would have thought with a, a big animal like a moose, you want penetration if you shoot them through the shoulder. No, you not, don't. not really when you hunt with the dogs because... Oh yes, you don't want to go through the beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, dogs have been killed by being slightly beside. Yes. And, and if the dog is in the wrong position, accidents can yeah. happen and yeah. we want to try to avoid that. So this is actually, for what we're doing today, it's a really good bullet. Yes, yeah, that's interesting, yeah. yeah. We mentioned history at the start and the lodge has plenty, including a fishing claim to fame. This is actually the spot where the rumour says that the British people came over and introduced fly fishing in Sweden. I don't know if it's true, but it's rumours and I've actually been reading about it too and we like to, we li we like to keep that rumour alive. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a beautiful spot and the, fish and the fishing is really good here. There could be moose anywhere from here on in and the heart certainly starts pumping when Stay is told to go. As soon as he let the dog go, my heart went. The hunt starts now. It's so exciting. On the other side of the mountain, Jens Ludwig and Jason are managing the weather. Their dog is Skate, a Gru hound, smaller than an elk hound like Stay. Both are popular breeds for this kind of work. Yeah. Then we have a chance to show why. We've just been called by the phone that um, a, a car has hit a moose just down here and they want us to go down and, and look for it with the dog and see if we can find it. It should be wounded by the car. It just happened 10 minutes ago. So it's a luck we are here. Skate locks on and soon the guys are making ground. 165 meters now, we can see on the gibby. It's very near. This is a vital role that hunters play. Jens takes his chance. relief that dogs, handlers and hunters have done the job. It's so exciting to go into the dog when it's barking like that and we couldn't see it for maybe 20 minutes but we could only see the dog barking. The dog? Yeah, work. perfect work. Successful hunt. Held it, held it really. Yeah, really good. Without Stay, moving. Stayed where, the, where it started to bark and then we did a good approach and got a nice shot in. For you? Is it more pressure because it's your dog and you want it to perform? Yeah, I know it's good and it's it's always nice when it's successful, so... Hold on, how far do you think the shot was? 10 meters? Ah, uh, yeah. 
between 10 and 20, yeah, 15. You were, you and were. I, I, we, we suddenly saw her moving to the left, and there was a little gap. Yeah, you were and very quick. Yeah, yeah. I had to be quick in that little opening in the bush. And, and the sticks and then the aim point is, um, and a red dot is perfect for to use. Where you can have both eyes open and, and see everything before you shoot. So uh, a scope where you have magnification is on that short distance is, can sometimes be not so good. They got it. Oh, they got really? the, yeah, they got the moose. Jan shot it, and uh, it was uh, badly injured from uh, the car accident. So, uh, yeah, this is a really good thing to be able to take care of those situations right away. To, yeah, to, to uh, how do you say it? Uh, it? It's a painful thing, of course. So we we need to end it as quickly as possible. So what type of moose was it? Uh, it looks like it's an adult female, uh, that's the information I got. Uh, but I'm happy with that they solved it quickly and uh, took that poor moose out of his pain. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. It's been a tough day on the hill, but nothing, a beautiful meal, some good company, a plate of delicious home-cooked locally sourced food and a glass or two can't solve. Better day today. Yesterday, dreadful, heavy wind and rain and everything else, but today is looking really, really good. But the most important thing is we've got the helicopter going. So exciting. Um, this is in some ways I, an aspiration as a hunter to be actually be taken up onto a mountain to work back, especially on moose. On this, uh, on this estate there's 14,000 hectares and there's no roads at all, there's no roads. So the only way to get to the top of the mountain is on a helicopter. So for us, especially for a UK a hunter, it is something different. So it's moose hunting with a helicopter. So I'm really, really looking forward to this. The weather report promises four seasons in a day. Let's start with winter. It feels remote and uncharted, and it's even a little unnerving having watched the chopper fly back to base for the next group. We are being guided by Magnus with his Leica, helped by Joachim, an apprentice on work experience from the local hunting college. The Leica is traditionally a fur dog and will work closer to the handler than the moose hound. It doesn't take long before we get contact. The sound of barking is thrilling. So, it's, look at the cough. If your dog is barking on that beast, should we have shot that calf or not? Uh, you can shoot that calf. Okay. It's allowed to shoot that calf. It probably has come from that area. It's common for a moose cow to take the dog away, allowing the calf to run off. So you're only moving where the dog's barking, yeah? Yeah, then, then the moose won't hear. Yeah. It may also be one of a set of twins.
Through the trees, we see the dog and a cow and calf. Oh, so exciting. The size of them, I cannot believe. It's like a, a cart horse running. And the way they run is oh, it's, it's brilliant. But uh, a wee bit of a, a tight way to to calm down a wee bit and just wait and for the instruction. But it didn't happen then. But just to see them in, in this environment is it's quite special. It's quite privileged to be able to do this. <laughs> We are moving much faster than yesterday, covering a lot of kilometres. Then the Leica races off from the release. Out of sight is a moose, out of cover. It doesn't bolt towards it, just stands off briefly to gauge the situation. Calm. And now he wants the moose to see him before we run. Oh. What is that? It's not a big ball, but I thought that it, I might saw something that might look like an antler. Do you see us, do you think? No. <laughs> that was the last sighting we have, and Jens has had a quiet day too. But we hear that Sabine has her first ever moose. It's been a fascinating day. Dropped off with a, with a helicopter and it's snowing. And then we worked our way from the high ground around to the lower ground. But it's a variety of terrain. We've got reasonably thick forest in some areas to real kind of sparse forest. And you've got the, the open bits here, the open pastures, I suppose, one for a bit of word. We've got little islands within these, these pastures. If you look at these pastures, there's little kind of birches and, and borders growing all through it, and the animals eat off that. And this is a wilderness. It hasn't been cultivated at all. So it's, it is, it's probably been like this for thousands of years, perhaps. And uh, it's just a, it's quite an adventure working your way through these different areas of the land and seeing where the moose are. And we saw some moose today, which is really exciting. Unfortunately, we didn't get a shot on one. The, the first two was a cow and a calf. We got within maybe 20 metres. I can see the dog uh, through the trees, but the tree was on the wrong side of us, and, and I think they must have seen us. And within about two minutes, phew, they're gone. But to see this, this lolloping, long-legged thing, this, this t careering away from us, it was like, wow, that's fantastic to see. Then later on, the dog actually spotted one, it's probably maybe 200 metres away, but the dog just sat down, he didn't chase it, he just sat down and looked at it, and the dog hander said, ooh, look. And I don't know how big it, it, it was, but uh, the dog sat there, watched it, and as soon as the beast moved, then it started chasing it. So it just shows you how well trained, or how instinctive these, these Leica uh, moose dogs are. So that was fantastic, but, and then towards the end, we saw reindeer. The dog barked and we sat back, thought, great, some moose coming our way. But over the horizon we saw some reindeer, so he's seen, and also we saw Capicali as well. So it's been a, a brilliant day. Unfortunately, there's no moose for us to, to shoot, but that's where it is. But it's just been it's one of those, it's a real adventure, I suppose, really. And I'm looking forward to another day tomorrow to perhaps hopefully get our first moose. day arrives and something feels right. The weather promises to be a lot kinder and once again we're flying into fresh ground. Before takeoff we chat with Frederick. Tim is finding that changing the settings on the Peltor units in hunting situations is giving him superpowers. And you're a moose hunter? Yes, yeah. I spend quite much time on that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> too much to compare what the bag I got, I guess. <laughs> well, we know how you feel anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, let's talk about hearing protection with Peltor. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not all about the protection of ears, is it? Just talk me through you know, what, you, what you're achieving with your, yeah. with your equipment. As, as you said, it's a hearing protection for sure, that's important. But it also can enhance your hearing. We can amplify lower signals. So if you're out 
and want you know like this quiet environment you want to feel a bit better the maybe the game that come in be more prepared or if, if you already have not used your hearing protection then you may need a little bit of amplification to hear so they say oh, we can amplify up to 10 15 decibel a little bit depends on, on what kind of product Day three, yeah, that's the last chance saloon. No pressure, mate, but we, we need to find find some moose, yeah? Good day. We have a good day, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah, it's really positive. First contact is within a few minutes of arrival. Ludwig is not confident. It's too soon after landing. That was a cow moose, yeah. yeah. And the dogs chased it across. Yeah. But as you said, it may have a calf with it. Yeah. And the calf may not be. Exactly. So we have to wait a bit yeah. just yeah. in case that calf comes running back afterwards. Exactly. Yeah, okay. It's a promising start. We're also having help from Johan this morning. He's a few kilometers away hunting with Stay. Okay, we've got our own bit of ground we're uh, hunting, but uh, Johan on the other side of this mountain here. So we're just waiting for about half an hour because the dog's actually working his way through this, this forest here. So we're just going to hedge our bets a wee bit. We've been on the ground for about an hour when we spot movement across a clearing. Eric, all your hours of patience and tend of us to keep both eyes open is paid off. So, uh, just uh, really? Oh, wow! Oh, my goodness.
Look at that mess. What a moment. Tim's first moose, and we have most definitely worked for it. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Ludwig. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Wow. Okay, he's done. That's, uh, that's one safe, that's all. Good work. Yeah. First impressions, first impressions of these is the size. Yeah. The size and also the colour. Yeah. yeah. Massive mm -hmm. animals. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And the scenery like this when it comes out you have a good good chance to see it before shooting and yeah, yeah. perfect. And, all, and also, I mean, okay, in this situation the, the, the dog didn't actually find it, no. but is this the whole concept yeah. of dog? pushing and hunting yeah, that and push exactly. and that's what's so exciting yeah. oh just what a beast yeah and the way it just walked across yeah knowing just, nothing <laughs> no, knowing nothing at all no no but well done yeah what a beautiful animal it's so gray you know i thought that the moose would be quite hard to see amongst these trees but it's actually quite light yeah and i thought it'd be a lot browner perhaps but uh yeah i mean it's just you know just look at the legs it's such such long legs, and I think they're designed to um, to go through the snow. Yeah, so that they've been there. So, and it's just that look at the face on it. It's such an unusual looking beast, I suppose. Uh, the rut starting in about a week or so's time, two weeks time. It will not be performing this year. It's too young. So actually, this is probably a good beast to take out. Across the valley ends. Here's the shot and the news. Just heard that team have shot a moose. That is fantastic. I can't wait to see, to see him and see his face, how happy he will be. <laughs> it's first moose. Close to that, is it? Yeah, exactly. The feet, Ludwig Gralik's our moose. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You could say its size makes it easier. It is super sized. As we wait for the helicopter, lunch is prepared and it tastes even better than usual. Great kit, great company and great hunting.